Okay, today I'm giving a public lecture, a very short one, uh, but a very interesting one, uh, on the life of John Stuart Mill, the utilitarian philosopher. The boy genius. There were two men who had great influence on John Stuart Mill. One was Jeremy Bentham, in 1748 to 1832. Uh, John Stuart Mill, as a boy, would spend his holidays at the great philosopher's house at Ford Abbey. In these plush medieval surroundings, the boy would have soaked in much of Bentham's utilitarian philosophy. The next man to influence the boy was his father, a, a disciple of Bentham and his philosophy. James Mill, 1773 to 1836, made sure his son had a fantastic education. At three, he taught his son John Greek and arithmetic. At seven, his son read Plato, and at eleven, was editing proofs of his book. The father had produced a boy genius. There are two other things to note about the boy genius. One is he often took the punishment for his younger brother and sister if he failed in their studies. This might have influenced him in later years to develop more of a social utilitarianism rather than more individualistic utilitarianism of Benthism. Also, the boy genius was not educated alone like some crank. He interacted with many people in his youth. Quote, Mill was no ivory tower intellectual. He grew up with the philosophical radicals, middle class reformers, end of quote. A mental breakdown at 20. During his youth, John had become a disciple of utilitarianism. In his late teens, he began to take on the mantle of champion of utilitarianism, just like his father. And Bentham, he had no respect for aristocracy, church, or the law. He saw himself as a social and edited many volumes of his father and Bentham's writings to further this end. Then at 20 years of age, John had a mental crisis. Tom Thomas gave gives a reason for this, quote, It seems likely that depression was caused by overwork. The overwork not only involved writing learned reviews, debating and campaigning for birth control, but editing from manuscripts the monumental five volumes of Bentham's Rationale of Judicial Evidence, a, ta a, ta a task which took him a year, end of quote. Some years later, in 1826, Mill's depressed depression lifted. It began when he was moved to tears by Mormontel's recollections of his father's death. He began to see he was not calculating machine, as many had said, but he realized he was a human being. The healing process continued. John immersed himself in poetry. He read much wider writers who were against utilitarianism. 1795 to 1881, Samuel Taylor Coldridge, 1772-1834, Augustus Comet, 1798 to 1857 and Alex de uh, Tocqueville 1805 to 1859 also the German Romantics such as Wilhelm von Humboldt in 1807 to 1835 so as true Aristotelian John Stuart Mill was gathering insights from all places quote henceforth Mill sought to combine respect for rigor and philosophical analysis with genuine attention to culture and emotion and it is this attempt to expand on his Enlightenment heritage that much of his f historical importance as a philosopher consists. At this time, he also studied law under John Hustin in 1750 to 1857 and read this book, book gave unity to John's thinking. Utilitarianism now became his religion. He set up a small group in his house which he called the Utilitarian Society. This met for three years. Also, John was working for the East Indian Company, a job he started in 1823 and finished in 1858. His job gave him plenty of time to continue as a social reformer. He met young men in London Debating Society. He wrote articles for the Westminster View. And he also championed the philosophical radicals. The philosophers falls in love. In 1830, John attended a dinner party and met Harriet Taylor, a beautiful young woman of 22, and they were soon in love. The problem was she was married and had children. Nevertheless, John and Harriet continued the relationship. They said they did not fulfill their sexual desires until after their marriage in 1851. The marriage lasted until Harriet's death in 1858.
pirate. And she made him see the importance of socialism and feminism. The defender of the faith. In 1836, John's father died whilst on holiday and John renewed his dedication to utilitarianism. In 1843, he published his book, System of Logic. He argued that all knowledge, including mathematics, is based on evidences of the senses. In 1848, the year of revolutions, he published his book, The Principles of Political Economy. In 1865, he was elected to Westminster. This was important, as Chris notes. Quote, His election allowed the intellectual left to combine for the first time with the modern socialism in Britain. At first, he worked closely with Gladstone, and when the Tories took power in 1866, he managed to prevent a meeting of reformers in Hyde Park from becoming a riot. End of quote. Page 7. Crispin. Defeated at the next election. The last part of his life he spent living with his stepdaughter Helen at Avingdon. Here he studied botany and continued to write essays until his death in 1873. His whole life had been a fight to bring utilitarianism to the world. The Utilitarian Philosophy so what was this philosophy that John Stuart Mill spent his life for? The philosophical foundations of utilitarianism go back to Locke, who taught that morality was a matter of pleasure and pain. Also, that knowledge comes from sense experience. This, this epistemology has profound effects for utilitarianism. Utilitarianism teaches that any action that produces the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people is the right action. Morality, then, is not an absolute base on intuition, but something that is learned based on empirical facts. Empirical in the sense of 19th century term. Five main criticisms can be made. From an epistemological view, it does not follow that all knowledge is based on experience, as some knowledge can be independent of experience. Bertrand Russell pointed out 2 plus 3 equals 5 is truth. I can know prior to my experience, could this not be with some moral truths? Second, the theological view of morality of Aristotle means that uh, denatologically I could kill a man, but if it brings happiness to his wife, then teleologically this is okay. Can this really be right? Thirdly, there is no way of proving an ultimate end to be the only possible end for morality. Fourth, morality is a matter of consumer behavior. This means there are multiplicity of values which cannot be reduced to general utility. Fifthly, it was a mistake to mix rationality in ethics with rationality in science, as John Stuart Mill did. As William has pointed out, science needs a standpoint, it's not an objective one, as thought. Uh, Ryan, page 59. The only criticism of Mill I have is that he was an elitist. He believed that there are individuals of higher intellectual and moral powers who have the right and obligation to exercise moral and influent, intellectual influence. Having said this, he was a great and noble man. He fought for women's rights as, as a David against the Goliath of the establishment, and he lived for the glory of adding the sum of human happiness. He was a great example of fearless intelligence, strong feeling, tolerance, responsible individuality, and love for his fellow human beings. Uh, so that's my lecture on John Stuart Mill. I don't agree with his agnosticism. I don't agree with some of the, much of his philosophy. But I do admire him. I admire his book on liberty. I admire, I, I've always admired people like John Stuart Mill, even though I disagree with them profoundly on their philosophical And why I've given this lecture, because there are people like John Stuart Mill have inspired me to think deeper about my faith and belief in Christ, even though he might not believe the same things as me. Uh, the references for this lecture are as follows. A. H. Acton, 1977, Utilitarianism, Liberty, Representative Government, London, G. M. Dent and Sons Limited. E. August, 1968, John Stuart Mill, London, Vision Press Limited. R. Crisp, 1997, Mill on Utilitarianism, London, Routledge. A. Ryan, 1982, J. S. Mill, London, Routledge. A. Ryan, 1987, John Stuart Mill and Jeremy Bentham, Utilitarianism and Other Eth Essays, London, Penguin. J. Skrupupski, 1998, The Cambridge Companion to Mill, Cambridge Companion University Press, 
W. Thomas, New York, Oxford University Press, M. Walsh, 1985, A History of Philosophy, London, uh, Jeffrey Chapman, etc. That's the end of uh, John Stuart Mill's life, and I hope that was an interest to you. And uh, may God bless you, and may you think deeply about your faith or about your skepticism, and may you be inspired to go deeper into thought uh, by the life and works of John Stuart Mill. Thank you for listening, and God bless you all.